My name is John Flett. I'm a paediatrician at Busamed Private Hospital, Hillcrest, in KZN. And I help parents, teachers and families who have children who think and learn differently. And this video is on behalf of those families who have children with ADHD. The type of problems and things they'd like to tell you, members of the public, teachers, other family members, and kids would like to tell their, their friends, but are unable to communicate that. And one of those things would be is, you know, the type of things that parents wish they could tell you about their child. ADHD is a real condition. It's not a behavior problem. It's not just a, from 1902 to 1980, ADHD was looked at as a behavior problem. It's just kind of a parenting issue, a child who had a bit of an issue, who needed to sort themselves out. But ADHD is a medical problem. And that's something that you need to know. It's something they can't help. A lot of the behavior is it's not that I won't do it, but I can't do it. And teachers, family, friends need to understand. Unfortunately, in previous generations, these things were difficult to understand for, for uh, people. And with recent scientific information, the research, brain scans, all the evidence helps us understand that ADHD is real. You know, it's not that a child needs to just try harder. Often a kid can do something and they do it once or twice and then automatically it's assumed that a child can do everything else. It's often because that child was motivated. There was something that was intrinsically beneficial. They got a payoff. They were motivated. They were interested in something. If they're interested, they can do it. They can play a PlayStation. They can play a kind of sports activities, watch TV. They can do things that are engaging, that they enjoy. But my goodness, they have a lot of difficulty doing things they can't. So they really try. Children often are looked at as just lazy. Kids really try. They want to please you. I don't believe that there's a child, you know, a young child who gets up, tries to defeat and undermine everybody, both at home and at school. They really want to. They want your acceptance, but they find it very, very difficult. So it's not a matter of just trying harder. The effort needed for a child to actually do something requires an enormous amount, a gigantic amount of emotional energy. They've got to put everything in. They've got to kind of use up all their energy to do something. And when they are overloaded and have to do a bunch of things together, they kind of lose that energy, they break down, they become irritable. They kind of lash out. They lose interest. And as a result, you know, they look at, looked at as being kids that don't fit in. They, you know, they often want to talk. They want to kind of finish your conversations. They're impulsive. They want to get that information out. It's almost as though there's this inability to hold it back. Those gates that hold it in just crash open and they talk, they interrupt, they jump up, they move. So I think if you have that perspective, ADHD is a disability. It is something that needs a lot of understanding and help. Changes happen when you focus on the strengths. Everybody has an Achilles heel. Everybody is not so great at something. And if we keep on focusing on that weakness, that can be something that is demotivating and it can bring everybody down, including kids with ADHD. Think about those strengths, things that they're good at, their ideas. They're able to come up with amazing creative ideas. They're good at sports sometimes. They're able to kind of sometimes do maths better than English or languages. So use that leverage, use that positivity to help uncover and motivate them to do things that are a lot more difficult. You know, no child tries to be a bad kid. You know, that is something I learned, you know, many years ago as a pediatrician. You have this perception early on when you're training as a doctor that often it's a matter of self-will. It's a matter of just that personality. Somebody who 
just tries to undermine and be difficult. But often there's a reason why those issues happen. You know, somebody with diabetes doesn't try to faint, doesn't try to have, someone with epilepsy doesn't try and have fits to try and get attention. ADHD kids, you know, if they're in the right circumstance, they're, they're with the right structure, with the right feedback, they can manage very well. But it's not that they're trying to be difficult. You know, harsh discipline doesn't really work. The stick doesn't work nearly as well as the carrot. Because children with ADHD, they are motivated when there's something new, when there's something that's an immediate payoff, when there's a reward. You've almost got to gamify life. You want to gamify and give them and help them understand that there's a payoff with everything they do. So whether it's a competitive edge in the morning getting dressed, competing with their brother to get ready, little tokens, being positive, immediate, and giving feedback. You know, often being, you've got to kind of have reward before you kind of discipline. Think about yourself in a work environment. If you're constantly being criticized and downgraded and ridiculed for things, it's very difficult to motivate yourself. But often when there is positivity, when there is reward, it can often overcome those obstacles to achieve what uh, the tasks that children with ADHD need to do. And they often have poor self-esteem. They have 10,000 more criticisms by the age of 10 than other children. Their, middle, their personalities are micro panel beating. So, you know, they have constantly this round peg in a square hole, as it were. They're constantly being rejected. They're constantly, they have difficulties with work, finishing work, often have associated problems with anxiety, learning disabilities. So no one with ADHD actually likes school. I often ask parents, you know, did you like school? And there's silence. I think when you don't know whether you like school or not, you didn't really like it. And often these would help parents understand from a perspective, understanding your own schooling and difficulties that you had. And ADHD doesn't just affect that individual, it affects the whole family. It has huge impact, ramifications on everyone. Parents don't want to go out, they have arguments amongst themselves. They have difficulty with school interactions, often worried they're going to get a phone call from school when a child has transgressed, had a behaviour problem at school. So it has huge impact, not just on you on the child. So, you know, support for the family, not just with a child with ADHD. And, um, you know, we all win when we kind of uncover the positivity. Children with ADHD have a lot more creativity. They've got a lot more ideas. They've got energy. I often see fathers who've had ADHD or do. And, you know, they might be in their late 40s, early 50s, and they've got the energy of somebody who's 30. They've got drive. They've got energy. And that persists. So that's a positive part of what I'm trying to say. They're often empathetic because they've had to undergo a lot of difficulties themselves. They've had to develop resilience. They've certainly got a lot of drive to, do, to run businesses. Kids with ADHD often engaging in sports. And you know, they often got a great sense of humour. So we've got to try and uncover that and have a different perspective. And that's why I'd like to just help you understand from a parent's point of view what it would be like to have a child with ADHD. You know, if you have a child at school and there's a kid in the class with ADHD, try and think about the things that I've spoken about. and That will help you give you a little bit more insight and understanding and maybe some sympathy for those parents who have children with ADHD.